bigger and faster ships, which have doubled the world's seaborne trade over the last 12 years, are too often on a collision course, say the experts, especially in the approaches to the English Channel, where nearly a half of the world shipping collisions occur. Every day, 750 ships pass through the five mile wide shipping channel of the Straits of Dover, making this the busiest and the most dangerous sea lane in the world. A seven year study of this problem has shown that there is little risk of collision when ships approach each other at right angles. It's when they're approaching each other end on, as in a narrow, busy shipping lane, that trouble comes. Start with 10 degrees now. On average, there are always 40 ships in the Dover Straits Channel, 20 going in each direction. And nowadays, there are 25 collisions a year, five times as many as 12 years ago. This vast collection of shipping and attendant services are now being sorted out. The 200 odd vessels bound for the River Thames every week used to heave two in the main shipping lane off Dungeness to pick up a pilot. Today, a high speed launch from Folkestone takes the Trinity House pilots out to meet Thames bound vessels. The launch puts the pilot aboard while the vessel continues on her course, keeping the shipping on the move in this restricted channel. 100 pilots work out of Folkestone. They take ships up the Thames to Gravesend and then come back to Folkestone by train for their next job. Four of Trinity House's 34 light ships around the coast of England and Wales are in the Straits of Dover. Every fortnight, a relief vessel visits these lightships to change some of the crew and deliver stores. Often, a hazardous trip in midwinter. These lightship men have been on leave for a fortnight. They now go back to their isolated job in the Straits of Dover for a month. Their vessel, the Vaughan, is 140 feet long and is anchored six miles off the coast, marking the Vaughan sandbank. The seven crew members of the lightship arrange for their own supply to be delivered by the relief ship, which also brings bags of coal for the galley stove and central heating system. The relief vessel then edges in close astern of the lightship a tricky manoeuvre in rough weather, and pipelines are passed between the two ships. Fresh water and diesel oil for the generating plants are now pumped aboard. After a couple of hours of hard work, everything has been transferred. The personal stores are still on deck, but with the relief completed, there's plenty of time to sort them out. Vaughan's light is of a quarter of a million candle power. It gives a red warning flash every 20 seconds and can be seen 22 miles away when visibility is good. The electrical system, the four bulbs and the enormous reflectors must be serviced daily by Vaughan's crew. The massive anchor chain, which keeps Vaughan in position, must be watched closely too. Periodically, some of the chain is hauled aboard and checked for wear and tear. On board, each man prepares his own food and his duty cook one day in six. Day and night, there are always two men on lookout duty, while for those off watch, there's plenty of time to read and yarn. As well as tending lightships, Trinity House vessels maintain over 700 navigational buoys around the coast of England and Wales, 25 of them in the Straits of Dover. Once a year, every buoy must be lifted and inspected, and the cylinders of acetylene gas for its light replaced. Cross-channel shipping further complicates the traffic problem of the Dover Straits. From Dover Harbour, over a hundred ferry services operate to the continent daily at the height of the summer season.
Queensland from Ramsgate Harbour, the first sea hovercraft service is now in operation, with four trips a day to Calais. Two 36-seater hovercraft cover the 30-mile journey in 45 minutes. Soon, there'll be much larger car-carrying hovercraft crossing the Straits of Dover. With hovercraft, ferries, through shipping, and swimmers trying to cross, the Straits of Dover can be chaos. A chaos of maritime traffic, which is constantly watched over by Coast Guard and rescue services. Six lifeboat stations, like this one at Dungeness, must always be ready for a call. Manned mainly by local fishermen and boatmen, a crew of eight is needed to put to sea. Depending on the tide, it takes from five to 15 minutes at Dungeness to get the boat away. On average, the boat is called away 15 times a year. It's impossible to calculate how many lives would be lost in the Straits if there were no lifeboats in the area. Also on call at nearby Manston are helicopters of the RAF Rescue Service. During the summer, calls come thick and fast from the holiday areas of the Dover Straits. Small boat crews in trouble, cliff climbing accidents, someone marooned on a sandbank. But the helicopters are there to help in shipping accidents as well. Accidents which have increased so alarmingly in this narrow deep water channel that now a new two-lane traffic system is being tried out at sea for the first time. Northbound ships are advised to take a new channel near the French coast. Southbound ships take the old channel along the English coast. One-way traffic, in other words. Trinity House vessels have laid four new buoys and moved the position of the Vaughan lightship to mark the southbound channel. The French have marked the new northbound channel. The captain of a ship at sea is responsible for his own course, but in future, any accidents due to ignoring the new system in the Straits of Dover will mean that somebody, as in the case of the Torrey Canyon, will have to do a lot of explaining.